One of the most frequent questions I see on my videos are people asking which Apple Silicon MacBook to buy in 2024. Luckily for you and unluckily for my wallet, I've tested and used every single Apple Silicon MacBook since 2020. And there's one in particular I think is the best device. And I wanna use this video to go through my thought process rather than just saying, yeah, just get this one because just trust me, bro. So I guess the most important thing to consider first of all is what do you actually use a MacBook for? And I see a lot of people making mistakes here. Typically it's buying an underpowered system for their specific workflow and then they have to upgrade like 12 months later or vice versa, wasting hundreds of bucks on a Pro or Max series chip when they just don't really need that extra performance. Now I have a really simple way to figure this out and it's what I used myself to purchase my own MacBook configuration. Just grab a piece of paper and write down all of the stuff that you use your MacBook for. Also take into consideration how long you plan on owning this MacBook, right? And all the stuff you plan on doing in the future. Here's a list of some popular workflows and you can pause the video for inspiration if you like. Then just draw a rough pie chart and roughly estimate what percentage you'll spend on each activity. Now for me, I do a lot of research and productivity tasks like web browsing, uh, Google Docs and emails, for example. I'm also, as you can probably tell, a YouTuber. So I'm frequently doing more intensive tasks like video editing and I dabble in travel photography and design work using Photoshop and Lightroom. I'm also mostly using my laptop at a desk, so portability isn't really a huge factor for me. So look at your pie chart. If the majority of it is you know, fairly simple stuff like productivity, Word documents, or web browsing, and maybe a little bit of more intensive stuff every now and then, you should probably, first of all, consider a MacBook Air. But first, if you're a fan of productivity apps, then there's one that works seamlessly on Macs called Magical. And thanks to them for sponsoring this segment of this video. Magical is a free productivity extension that uses AI to automate repetitive tasks like data entry and messaging, saving me seven hours of work every single week. For example, if you need to get information from multiple web pages, instead of copying everything manually, Magical's automations feature labels the entire page grabs the info you want and fills it into a spreadsheet or a form. And this is great for writing papers and finding sources to cite, organizing research, or even apartment hunting, tracking job applications, automatically updating patient forms, literally anything. The templates feature lets you use shortcuts to expand text that might otherwise take time to manually type. You can of course make your own templates, so I have one responding to frequent emails I get. I also have it for my email address and shipping address. Magical can of course do a lot more, like AI reply, which can reply to entire emails instantly. It's designed to save you time, so you can spend it on things you actually enjoy, like watching YouTube videos. So make sure you check out Magical if you want to boost your productivity and save tons of time. It's completely free and I'll leave a link to get Magical in the description below. So let's first dive into the MacBook Air. There are two main choices here, 13 versus 15 inch and which version, either the M1, M2 or M3 you should get. Now size choice is pretty easy. The 15 inch is obviously more expensive and you get a bigger screen. And despite what people may tell you, two inches is actually quite a lot for laptop screens. Now you'll definitely notice the bigger screen area for productivity stuff like Excel, check out this Excel comparison test I did, or side-by-side -side windows and multitasking. But apart from that, there's no huge differences between the 15 and 13 inch versions. And I made a separate video that goes into detail on that if you're interested. I also think the M2 is the best bang for buck. The M1 is great, I personally love it, but uh, you know, let's be honest, it is getting a little bit dated now, especially with the old chassis, and the M3 only came out a few months ago, so the prices are still quite high. Right now, at the time of making this video, on Amazon, you can get a brand new M2 MacBook Air for 799 bucks versus 999 for a brand new M3. And of course, on the secondhand or refurbished market, there's gonna be a bigger pricing difference because the M2 has been out longer than the M3. So you can, of course, get a better deal. So that's something to consider. Now, in terms of physical and performance differences between all three, again, to keep this video short and concise, 
I recommend checking out this detailed MacBook Air comparison video I made. Long story short, the M2 is quite a bit better than the M1, but the M3 is only a little bit better than the M2, to the point where you probably won't notice it, particularly when doing simple multitasking stuff. But remember what I said before with the whole pie chart thing. I mean, if a decently sized chunk of that pie is more than simple tasks, you are probably going to need more performance because the air, although powerful, does have its limits. Now, if you really wanna deep dive into this topic and see if you're maybe okay with an Air, or maybe you should go to a Pro, watch these two videos. I'll make your decision much easier because I compare a bunch of the same typical workflows on the Air and also the Pro. Now, regardless, do I recommend paying a little bit extra and going for the MacBook Pro over the Air? Even if you maybe don't necessarily need a more powerful laptop. And when I say Pro, I mean the Pro version of the Apple Silicon chips, like the M2 Pro or M3 Pro, not the base model 14-inch MacBook Pro, which, although it does have Pro in the name, just has the same basic M3 chip as the MacBook Air. I know, it's confusing. And look, my advice is always to go for a Pro, uh, you know, if you can afford it, of course. I honestly think it is currently the top three best laptops you can get right now, uh, not only out of the Mac lineup, but from Team PC as well. It's also better than the Air in almost every single way. Better screen with 120 hertz ProMotion, you know, the high refresh stuff you get on the iPhone Pro. Yep, that's the one. More ports, significantly more performance, and the big one, the Pro comes with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM as a base model, versus the Air that only comes with half as much, 256 gigabytes and eight gigabytes of RAM. To get the same SSD and RAM size on an Air, you need to spend $400 more. Now, portability is also a factor here, but it's not as significant as some people make it out to be. I mean, for example, the 13-inch Air versus the 14-inch Pro. And I've traveled with both all around the world, and sure, the Pro is heavier and obviously a little bit thicker, but the actual footprint in a backpack or on an airplane tray table, for example, is very similar. And in a backpack, you probably won't notice the weight difference, especially if you've got other stuff in there. So I wouldn't really let the lightweight Air design of the Air compared to the Pro influence your decision too much because in actual day-to-day -day usage, it's just not that significant. And the trade-off is you get all of these incredible features on the Pro that the Air just doesn't have. Now, one side note here is that there definitely is a major difference between the 14 and 16 inch Pros. I mean, you can still travel with the 16 inch, but it's noticeably heavier and is not quite as portable. I often have trouble squeezing it into the laptop sleeve of certain bags, and it's not something you wanna use in tight spaces. It's just best suited for those who prefer a large screen, but mostly use a laptop at a desk and maybe travel between home and work. Because carting this thing around airports or college lecture theaters, for example, just isn't really ideal, at least in my own personal experience. There's also no difference in performance or features between the 14 and 16 inch Pros. You're just paying more and getting a larger screen size. Now, when it comes to choosing which version, either the M1 Pro, M2 Pro or M3 Pro, it's very similar to what I said about the MacBook Air. The M2 version is the best bang for buck. It's going to shred most workflows, especially anything creative related. For example, the Adobe Suite. I went into a ton of detail in a comparison video and compared a huge range of workflows. Everything from developers compiling code, music production, photo and video editing, 3D modeling, and gaming. In terms of price, the M3 Pro is available from Apple for $19.99. But again, check those sales. It's on sale on Amazon right now for just $16.99. That's just a few hundred bucks more than a 13-inch Air with the equivalent upgraded RAM and SSD. Now, if you can't find the M3 Pro for a discount, just go with the M2 Pro, either brand new from a reseller or a refurbished model. I also personally would not 
go for an M1 Pro unless I can get a really good discount on it uh, because the M2 Pro is quite a bit better. Side note, if you think you need a more powerful Max chip instead of the Pro, chances are you actually do. There are significant performance improvements when going from a Pro to a Max. So watch these two videos to compare them across a number of different workflows and real life tests. So yeah, look, can't go wrong with a 14 inch MacBook Pro, either the M2 or M3 Pro version, doesn't really matter which one. Just get whichever has the best price at the time you're buying one. But if it's out of your budget or is totally overkill for your needs, just get it on an M2 or M3 MacBook Air and call it a day. 